Hey guys, thanks for tuning in for this special bonus episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you would, please take the time to drop a like, comment, or feedback, or subscribe to the podcast as well. Our special guest in this bonus episode is legendary actor and musician Kevin Costner. Now, this interview was done coinciding with the release of his single, Love Shine, back in August of 2017. We visited about his music, his acting career, and a, at the time, upcoming series named Yellowstone. I gotta say, this is one of those bucket list type moments, having the chance to visit uh, with one of my acting heroes and uh, music heroes as well, Kevin Costner. And first off, Kevin, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show this morning. Well, I appreciate it, Cameron. Thanks. Now, now, Kevin, the, uh, the, the the new single, Love Shine, we've been playing it actually ever since I saw it on Play MPE. And uh, what's so special about this single to you personally? Well, I, I don't know. If there, uh, <laughs> it's actually some other people really started to like it. A guy named Tommy Steele heard it and then heard the last four or five songs we had just recorded. He said, why don't you play these on the record? And I said, uh, duh, I don't know, because uh, I, you know, I haven't, you know, tried to create the architecture for a rock and roll, you know, uh, living. I just the, the band I've had for the last twelve years, we've made about five or six records, and and so when people discover the music, they're always kind of very seem to be very very surprised. And in this case, these last four songs we made, I think you have two of them, mm-hmm. um, Last Time and Love Shine. Tommy, who's a manager, heard these songs. He goes. Do you mind if I let people hear these? I said, you know, we'll be playing for people. Go ahead, Tommy. I guess, <laughs> so the truth is, Cameron, I don't have a machine, but we've made a lot of records. We made a concept record about Hatfield and McCoy's called Famous for Killing Each Other. And for people who haven't heard that, I think if you look up Kevin Cross or Martin West, you'd really like that record. So Love Shine is just really a reflection of the kind of music we choose to write about. You know, we're not looking to try to write a hit as much as write a song that has a level of meaning to us. And Love Shine is just simply about a man and a woman who was a little bit stormy, and we all go through that. Things are a little bit broken, maybe. And the only way I know to try to put that back on track is to kind of shine a light on each other a little bit. Shine it on me, shine it on you. Shut out all the noise. Just let's focus on each other. So that's what Love Shine's about. So I guess maybe maybe Tommy had a stormy relationship going on in the song. Really meant something. Had a level of meaning to him. I don't know. Now, what was it that first drove you back into music? I mean, and, and brought the inspiration to get back into music after after so many years. My wife um, said to me, she found some early music, and she goes, well, what's this? And I said, well, it's something I was doing in my 20s. She goes, well, I like it. Why don't you keep doing it? And that, just like a kid who doesn't want to take out the trash or the vegetables, I just kept going, out. Nah, and she said, she finally cornered me. She said, after about two years of saying, I don't know why you don't do this, because I can tell you're really happy when you're making music. And, and and I still hemmed and hawed. She finally said to me, can I ask you a couple questions about this? Goes, yeah. I said, yeah. She says, are you happy when you're making music? I said, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> and she goes, do you think other people in front of you are happy when you're playing? And I go, uh, yeah, I, I think they are. And she looked at me in a really simple way. She says, well, what could be wrong with that? You're right. And, that, and it suddenly released me. You know, it's not like I haven't taken big bites in my life, but I really was trying to just hold back on the music, you know, just simply because I, you know, I, you know, I have a career, I do this other thing, but, but look, when you're playing music, I can, I see you clearer than whenever I see you. Mm-hmm. And so 12 years ago, formed Modern West, and we played all over the world now. I don't really advertise it. Um, played the Grand Ole Opry three times. We played Russia. I played Putin. I, I, I played the Kremlin. I played some amazing places. But um, these, this song that you have and last time are songs that um, that I think Tommy said. I think people would enjoy these songs, and and I'm really appreciative, Cameron, that you would even think to play them. Well, I, I I got the 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 release from MPE and and I I played it and I was like you know I, I think we're gonna check that one out tomorrow and had several people respond to it and I was like okay well we'll start playing that one and uh, now I know you you, you keep mentioning uh, feels like the last time and what, uh, what tell us a little bit of the story behind that single as well. Well, 
uh, last son, my dad's from Oklahoma. My family's from Guymon, Oklahoma. And um, my my dad and I went on a hunting trip this last fall, and um, I took my oldest son, and I watched my dad struggle out there and um, with the oxygen, but strongest guy in the world. And, and after two days, we were having to say goodbye at the airport. And then, you know, the guy at the airport's kind of rushing me off the curb the way they do. You can't park there. You can't just, and I'm sitting here staring at my dad, you know, and, uh, and it felt that way. And, and this guy's rushing us off. I'm looking at him. And we had to say goodbye, right? And uh, I look at my son. I said, I don't I want you to remember him struggling. I, this was the toughest guy I knew. I mean, it was, they, they had to leave because of the dust bowl. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, uh, and I said, you know, this could be the last time for us. And so I went home and started writing a song. And uh, probably the best example of how modern rest of the band actually functions, I told the guys the song I was writing. And it wasn't like some great epiphany, but the truth was everybody was a little bit slack jawed because everybody has a last time. Mm-hmm. And every, you either had one or you're going to have one with the person that's loved you the you know, longest and probably the most, you know. Mm-hmm. And so when I started doing that, everybody wanted to pitch in on the song. And so uh, if you listen to last time, at least you know what, at least you know what the song's about. Now, do you think uh, that, that that's possible to make its way into radio as well? Well, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, not in control of any of that. <laughs> like I said, I don't have a machine. I, I'm just grateful that you even are talking about love shot um, you know I just think that's a very cool thing in this day and time that you take a song not being pushed and managed and whatever and just say you know what's my radio station it's my hour or two I'm playing the song I, I appreciate that <laughs> Now, now for you, obviously, you have another career that's that, that's pretty good for you as well. Did, which one of those do you actually have to work harder at between the music and obviously the acting? Well, I, I work hard at, at all of them. You know, when people pay money to come see us play music, that's a really serious thing for me. And um, I've always loved making my movies. So, you know, I wasn't a very good student in school. But when I found the job I wanted to do, I always took it really seriously. So I'm always really prepared in movies. I still act that way. I'm, I'm sitting here right in front of my script right now and up here in Park City, Utah, getting ready as I'm doing this thing called Yellowstone up here. Mm-hmm. It's a long form series and that will actually probably write music for it. You know, the director will ultimately decide if it's good enough. But I mean, that's kind of a rule about music, right? If it's good enough, you play it. Right. It's like, it's like, well, you know, oh, she's, you know, well, where is she from? Who cares? She's beautiful. <laughs> you know, it's like, what, what are you talking about? Where is she from? What does it matter? Um, so music, I think, is very kind of democratic that way. You know, if you can do it, you can, you know, if the song makes sense to somebody, you know, and, and let's face it, we want our songs sometimes to have a level of meaning to us above and beyond being catchy. You know what I mean? That's right. Now, how is it that you're able to to meld the two worlds, music and and movies, and how hard is it for you to to devote some time to each of them? I don't find that hard at all. I mean, when we go on tour, it's kind of like a bunch of guys going away to camp, right? We're all (laughs) kind of glad to see each other, and we think we rub our hands, oh boy, we're going to write the best songs while we're out on the road. We never write one. We never write one song when we go on tour. But I end up writing like screenplays at night in the bus. And then when they come to visit me, like they're coming, we're going to play in Park City here in September, I think. When they come out, we're going to be doing some interviews and writing some new songs. But when they come out and they're on the movie set, we were, that's when we're the most productive. And I don't know what it is about that. Maybe the thing that you think you're supposed to be doing, you can't do it. But when you're not having to do it, it, it seems like everything tumbles out. So they'll come here, they'll be on the movie. In fact, when I actually perform live, I tell the people, you know, right in front of me, because, you know, we're playing all our original stuff and they may or may not know it. But, uh, you know, I, most of the songs we have were written on the sets of the movies that I perform. Now, when was it that you first picked up the guitar and, and who was it that inspired you first with music? 
Well, I, I, my grandmother uh, was the choir director in our Baptist church, and uh, I, um, my mom was in the choir, her sister was in the choir. So I grew up around music, and I would train classically on the piano. Um, I didn't play an instrument um, in Roving Boy, which was the band in, in the tw- my, when I was in my 20s. Mm-hmm. But when I um, decided I wanted to play again, I just decided I, you know, I was going to, you know, go ahead and write and stuff. So I just uh, picked up the guitar about 14 years ago and just taught myself on my way to work. You know, I think it was kind of hard on the driver, <laughs> the Easter guy, because he goes, Jesus, you're going to ever quit playing that same song? I said, well, not till I can get it. And uh, I said, you, you want to drive somebody else? He said, no, 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 I'll we'll drive you. <laughs> So I went out and got this little mini Martin because I could play it in the front seat and I could put down music right in front of me. I'd open up the glove department and I, and I would set the music right there. And I'd play these two or three songs. And, um, and then about a month and a half later, it all started to feel just right. And so I, you know, if I was going to play live, I, I just wanted to be able to play. I didn't want to really hit a tambourine or something. <laughs> Now, now, who were your biggest musical influences on your style as well? Well, you know, I, I, the 60s were really important to me because of the kind of scope of music, uh, the, the genres, if you will, that were uh, in, in play. Um, you know, and I, I was influenced by disciplined songs, you know. Um, that, you know, I, would, I was listening to Motown. I was listening to The Four Seasons. I was listening to The Doors. I was listening to The Beatles. I was listening to, you know, uh, Simon and Garfunkel, you know. So, you know, I was listening to James Taylor, the individual artist, you know, um, uh, Carol King. And then that music just kept, you know, moving, just kept rolling, as you will. So... I've been influenced by, I'm influenced by good music, regardless of, of genre. That's right. Now, obviously, uh, so many people know you, a, a huge name in, in movies, in films, uh, TV as well. And uh, I was actually texting my wife uh, a little bit ago, just uh, texting her the different movies of yours that I'd watched. And by the yeah. time I got done to it, I think I was down to, to 27 movies of yours that I have I have watched over the years. And it, it, does, does each one, is it like a, a child and each time that you're working on a new one, is that your new favorite? Yeah, it's, uh, listen, you know, the, 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 the thing I can say that I'm happiest about, and I'm happy about how my life has turned out, not that it hasn't been, you know, bruised. I mean, you know, I've taken some big bites out of life, right? You know, and life has taken some equally big bites out of me. And so, you know, people think that, you know, you don't have, I have my own problems, you know, and I, but, I, but when I look at it, I understand how lucky I've been. I understand how good I, it is. But when I look at my career, I would just say the thing that I'm happiest about is that, and I, and probably from a business perspective, I haven't done it right. But when someone comes up to me, I almost never know what movie's going to come out of their mouth, mm-hmm. and it usually ro- revolves around ten or fifteen movies that people come up and say that was my favorite movie. And so, what I'm happiest about is that it doesn't come down to a single movie. I think I'd be a little distressed if just everybody's go this movie, this movie. You know, not and, and go, wow, you know, I've tried to make a career of making movies. And what I haven't done is make the same movie over and over again. Right. And so that was probably bad business because that's when you back the truck up and tell them how much money you want. <laughs> you know, if you make three tin cups or mm-hmm. three bull drums or three open rangers or three dances or if you go right down the list, bodyguards. So I've been asked to do those movies in different forms and sequels, and I haven't done it. And that's not probably the smartest move or has it endeared me to studios who say, hey, we can make a boatload of money. Mm-hmm. And I said, listen, if it's good enough, I'll, I'll make it again or, or another version of it. But So I don't have anything against sequels, to be quite honest. It's just I, I didn't build my career that way. So if you, are, if you are one of those people that I don't know which is your favorite movie, that in a way makes me happy. Yeah, and, and and you know everybody seems to that I've talked to always brings up Field of Dreams, you know, and uh, Dances with Wolves. I think my favorite for years is uh, it, my, I loved your, your your portrayal of Wyatt Earp. That is that is one of them that sticks out for me. 
Well, thank you. I, I loved really making that movie. Um, I did. I, and I've been really lucky to make Westerns, and there was something that I wanted to do, and I'm going to keep making them. I gotta, I'm making a modern-day Western out here in Utah called Yellowstone. It's a, it's a long-form series, and we'll probably, like I say, write some music for it. But I have a, another Western in my pocket that I, I want to make, and um, desperate to make it. It's about 10 hours long, which is sounds just like me. Um. <laughs> well, that is awesome. And, and Kevin, I, I did have a listener that uh, whenever I mentioned you were going to be on the show, they said that they have been collecting your movies, and they said they've had some problems finding some of the older movies, and they wanted me to ask if you knew where they could pick up some of the older movies, maybe online or something. I don't know that. I, I don't navigate the web very well. In fact, even though it says Kevin Costner and Modern West, I, I, I actually go, I have to call up the guys to go, hey, how does this work? Uh, so. Well, that's funny. Maybe I will uh, I will do some research and see if I can find that answer for her. But, uh, Kevin, truly, it is it has been my privilege to have the chance to visit with you. I've been a big fan for many years, and uh, hopefully next time you come near and, uh, near and about to us, uh, get the chance to come and watch you guys play live. I would love to come to some downtowns in Oklahoma and just play really loud and really long. I'd have to go play someday in Guyman to shut down Main Street, see what that's all about. That's what I love to do almost more than anything is just play live in front of people standing up and and it's just loud and fun. Well, we will uh, we'll, we'll see if we can make that happen. All right, buddy. Thank you, Cameron. Thanks again for joining us for this bonus episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, find me on Instagram at aka underscore Cameron, on Twitter at Cameron Dole, also on my Facebook page at Cameron Dole Altus. Also, if you'd like to help out with the funding for this podcast, feel free to click on the support tab and follow the instructions.